If you're using social media, the reality is that you don't own the relationship you have with your audience. It's owned by the platform. And if you're running your business through the internet and you don't have direct access to your audience, to your customers, then you don't own your business. So it should go without saying that you absolutely need your own website and you need your own email list. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about something serious with you for a minute. I want to talk about why you absolutely need your own website and your own email list when all these social media platforms are free. And the bottom line is the only thing that's convenient about them is the fact that they're free and the traffic is already there. But there are some problems and some caveats that go with that. And if you've been paying attention to anything going on in the world, then you probably understand why. Do you know what one of the key differences between someone who's an employer and an employee? It's who owns the relationship with the customer. And you would think that, you know, with X amount of followers in TikTok or Twitter, or Instagram, subscribers on YouTube, you would think that the person who owns that relationship is you because, well, you built that. You built that relationship with that audience. You made the content. These people signed on for you. But at the end of the day, if they decide to, for whatever reason, if social media decides to uh, delete your account, suspend your account, or the algorithm changes in some way that's not favorable to you, then guess what? All of that effort and all of the hard work that you put in to build those relationships doesn't really amount to anything because you don't control the access. You have no way to guarantee that you can reach these people that want to hear from you. And while this might sound obvious, most people, especially a lot of people who are millennials or Gen Z, absolutely refuse to build their own website. And they hate the idea of asking people to sign up to their email list and their newsletter. It's something like, it's just like they're allergic to it or something like that. I don't know, but I do understand some of the reluctance here. For one thing, we live in an age where, let's face it, people are gonna feel a little bit more spoiled, a little bit more entitled. I know I sound like the old man in the room, back in my day, we paid for everything. I, I understand, but the reality is, yeah, back in my day, we did pay for everything. You paid for web hosting. There was almost no such thing as free hosting or free anything on the internet back in the days of AOL 7.0, Angel Fire, Lycos, and GeoCities. What'd they do, give us like 20 megabytes? 20 megabytes. And back then, we thought that was a lot. But now you have unlimited hosting for videos that are like terabytes large on YouTube. You have unlimited you know, hosting in many forms throughout these websites, whether it's like Facebook, Instagram for your photos and whatnot. And so when you, when you really look at it, when you really think about it, we do have a very great opportunity here. It's this abundance of resources and access that you know, 15 years ago just didn't exist. But here's the downside when you don't pay for anything, you get what you pay for. In terms of being a priority, customer service and control, well, the value of having free platforms that give you so much, don't require you to build or maintain anything, is that, yeah, they have all the leverage and that might actually be fair. They did in fact put all the upfront investment and infrastructure into that, we showed up. We participated. And so, like I said, you get what you pay for. Now, as cynical as all that might sound, when you actually decide that you're gonna pay for and have your own website, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. It is another bill, it is another expense. But if you're somebody who's not doing this as a hobby, or if you're somebody who's invested in this, whether you're doing an online business or you're an influencer, this is part of your livelihood and part of protecting that livelihood is having an abundance of options. And again, owning the relationship you have and actual access and control when it comes to those relationships, when it comes to the audience that you built. They built the platforms, you built the audience. Now, the idea that I've always stood by is the idea of moving my audience and taking traffic away from these platforms and taking it to my own platforms, one that I have through my websites. The problem is that when you take traffic off these platforms, there's a little bit of a penalty in the algorithm. You will not grow as fast. It will not promote or push your content as much. That's just the way that it is. And some of them have like done so much to limit reach <laughs> Facebook, that it feels very much pay to play at that point. And if you're gonna do pay to play, you might as well at least own your own website and your own domain name and be able to control the look, the branding, the feel, and of course, the access to your audience. 
this stuff is not cheap. That's why most people, you know, decide that they're just going to use the free platforms and they're going to live with the consequences until the consequences actually show up. And then it's a problem. Now, there are a lot of like web hosting companies out there, and I think they're reasonable and affordable. You just have to make that decision of whether you want to do this or not. Now, if you're someone who's not a paid influencer, or you're not monetized on YouTube, or you don't have an e-commerce brand where you're like making money off of this stuff already, you know, selling things or doing affiliate marketing, then it could feel like, oh God, it's just one more bill. It's one more thing to pay for. But it's reasonable because it does put you in a position to earn money usually through things like e-commerce and like affiliate marketing. If you're going to sell things directly, if you're going to do e-commerce, then Shopify is something that specializes in that. They're not a sponsor or anything. It's just like I'm recommending some things here. So Shopify is where you'd want to do something like that. Me, for example, I'm building a template store to sell graphic design templates to people for social media. So I'm using Shopify specifically for that. When it comes to my online coaching business and my membership program, I use Kajabi as my you know hosting company for my online courses and products and things like that. So it's a little bit different than a template store or if you were selling you know clothing, you would do it through Shopify. There's a lot of stuff you can do with e-commerce on Shopify, but for digital education products, you wanna use platforms like Kajabi and Teachable. Those are like the best ones for courses and memberships, okay? I'm gonna to link to those down below. Those are affiliate links if you wanna check them out, get a free trial, all that good stuff. Now, if you just want a simple website and blog, then the most practical solution if you want control is gonna be something like a WordPress website. For that, I recommend Bluehost because they hooked our audience up with a discount. So I'm gonna to link to that down below as well. Those of you who don't wanna do WordPress, coding intimidates you, all of that stuff, then I would say use something like Squarespace or Wix. Wix is actually pretty good. My mom actually likes Squarespace, but my sister prefers Wix. As far as I'm concerned, working with clients and stuff, I found them to be comparable or relatively the same. I don't really have a bias toward one or the other. I've used both. For my photography portfolio stuff, I have a Squarespace site that I use that I built put together in a weekend. So I don't think this has to be overly complicated. If you can use any of these social media platforms, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to put together your own website. It's not that much more complicated to use. Sometimes it's actually easier in some cases. Now, having all that website traffic for yourself is great, especially if you're directly selling a product or a service because you can do the transaction stuff, PayPal, Stripe, you need those in place because you need the payment processors to make anything happen. So that's going to be really important. But in terms of being able to communicate and distribute content, even content from your other platforms to your audience that they may have missed because algorithms may not be working for you properly or um, notifications may not be getting through, et cetera, et cetera. This is where an email list and email marketing plays a crucial role in the future of your business and you really having access to your own audience because with an email, the audience decides whether they're gonna open it or not. The algorithm isn't deciding whether they see it or not. They get to see it in their inbox and then they get to make a decision. Do I open this or do I not? Do I wanna hear from you or not? They opt in or they opt out. Now I've done some videos in the past on email marketing. It's a very niche subject. It's not the thing that most of my audience is excited about, but I think you guys are starting to understand the urgency of having your own website and having your own email list and also having something directly to sell because again, a platform can cut you off at their discretion. And I'm okay with that. These are businesses, they're private entities. We agreed to the terms of service. That was the deal. I have no issue with that whatsoever. I just wanna deal in the practical reality of what do we do if that should happen? How do we mitigate uh, the losses that would occur if you do that. That's why I've never gone all in on YouTube. I get a lot of people saying, Roberto, YouTube's your biggest platform. You have like a half million subs. Why don't you have this going on? Why don't you have that going on? Why don't you grow bigger? Why don't you add a million? Why don't you get these views? Why don't you get that? I don't do what's in YouTube's best interest. I do what's in Roberto's best interest. And that's why I won't always get the views because I'll make helpful videos like this that have no hope of entertaining a young audience going viral or being for a majority of people. I do these videos to help some of you out because it's important. And you know, I wish more of you would watch, but I'll take it. I also don't control the algorithm. I don't control whether or not the notifications work. Less than 10% of this audience has notifications turned on because 
YouTube notifications didn't exist when I built the first quarter million subscribers on this channel. YouTube notifications didn't exist and YouTube never decided to opt everybody in to notifications that was subscribed to me. So there's probably less than 60,000 of you that even have notifications and only 35,000 of you have them all turned on. See, these are things beyond my control, but building an email list gives me some control back and gives you, the viewer, some control back in terms of how you want to reach me. So if you want to be on my newsletter, you want updates, you want some of the discounts that I run on things or some of the roundups and news updates for the community, then go to robertoblake.com slash newsletter, link down below. You'll also get my free ebook. And see, it's really that simple to tell your audience another way to stay in touch with you should the worst happen. It's also good to have a website and find a way to regularly promote that by giving your audience something that they would enjoy, that they would want, that they would care about, or just letting them know there exists a way to reach you if the platforms are not cooperating. Now, when it comes to email programs, a lot of people will go with uh, the cheapest solution, the freest solution. Uh, some of them, you know, you upgrade later, but there's like hidden fees or cost or something like that. I've used really almost every email marketing program out there, either for myself or for clients or when I've worked in corporate. And what I've come to the conclusion on is there's two that I can recommend for sure. Growing my list was something that was very important to me. And so I use ConvertKit. I like it because of its automation, its features, and because it's simplistic. It's what my friend Pat Flynn uses. He's the one who really put me onto it. So you can check that out. Link is in the description down below or go to robertoblake.com slash go slash ConvertKit. And what I used to use back in the day myself was MailChimp because of the marketing around MailChimp and that it was free. It was kind of like the Dropbox of email marketing for a lot of people. But because I make a lot of freebies for my audience, I like to do a lot of freebies and give stuff away. I ended up making duplicate list with MailChimp. So when I started paying for it, it started to get more and more expensive uh, for the same people downloading stuff over and over again and getting onto multiple lists. So I went with ConvertKit because I only pay for, you know, one email per person with the way that it's set up. So in the long run, I do feel like you should pay for these things so that you have more control and you have more options if you can afford that, if it's part of your business. And so for me, ConvertKit, still the best solution. So everything that I'm talking about is linked down below. The bottom line of this very dry video is that you need to have a measure of control when it comes to what you're doing online. You need a way to have direct access to your audience and to the relationships that you built. You need a website, you need an email list. You need, in my opinion, some kind of e-commerce solution that is separate from your major social media platform in terms of monetization. That way you're not relying on the brand deals, relying on the ad revenue or the donations or whatever. People need to be able to do a transaction with you because you need access to your customers. You need to have some control over your resources and you need to be able to directly sell. Like this is what has to happen in order for you to truly have a business that you're in control of instead of somebody else. Question of the day. Do you have an online business or is social media a hobby for you? Let me know in the comment section. If you want to do more with online business and make money online, watch the video up here. And if you also are trying to do anything with affiliate marketing, I have a wonderful playlist that you can check out. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.